Let's see here. Now, somewhere around here, I, I believe, I get out of this truck here. I had my friends from YouTube. Wanted them to show this, show them this truck right here. Are they around? Oh, hi. How are you? It's a big old truck here. It's a Silverado. It's a heavy duty. And it's big as a house. Wanna come inside? Stick with me. See that bed? That bed is built to hold a lot. 3,300 pounds, in fact, of your cargo. This is, in fact, the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado HD. This is your standard bed on there, which I believe is six and a half feet. And uh, this, uh, this is a hell of a big truck. <laughs> It's, uh, it's built for the, for the serious work, you see. And uh, it's also got a lot of changes for 2024, a lot of uh, sprucing up, if you will, of the interior. And uh, it's got this wild looking exterior and this wild looking front grille on it that is very, very unique to the Silverado. And it's also got an enormous 6.6 .6 liter V8 engine. You, naturally, you can also get the uh, diesel variant of the power planes, power trains, I should say, which is probably gonna be the most popular, but it's nice that you also have the option if you wanna run gas instead of diesel, you can, because this does have a uh, substantial diesel option on it. Uh, and uh, in this case, it also, this uh, particular V8 engine also has a real nice 10-speed Allison transmission, the automatic, you see, and it's, uh, it can tow a great deal. 16,000 pounds, I believe, is a conventional trailer limit. And uh, it's, it's a beast. It's a massive creature. And that wheelbase is like 75 feet, something like that. I'll, look, I'll give it to you in just a minute. But uh, this, one of the things about this truck is it is very, very high off the ground. It's high off the ground to the point that if you don't have running boards, in this case we do not have running boards, it's a, it's a chore to get into it. I mean, it's, it's really, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you gotta get up there, you gotta lift yourself up to get in. And uh, it also has so many nice convenience touches to make this a good working truck. For example, we have uh, these pockets. You got one in, uh, right down there. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And then you got one closer in, right there. So you can, uh, you can climb up in the back and unload your, uh, your gold bullion or whatever you put in here. You could haul some bullion in this thing too. Uh, something interesting about the payload on this, I believe it's 3392 and the specs say, and that's what the, that's what the sticker on the side of the truck it, uh, says. And that's important because it, uh, that reflects exactly what the truck can actually take as equipped. Usually it's considerably lower than what the specs say uh, if you're just reading like their brochure. <laughs> but on this particular truck, for whatever reason, see these things, here's your placards. And right down here is this, all this valuable information. Uh, this truck can actually carry five pounds more <laughs> than what the specs say, according to this sticker. Uh, the uh, gross curb weight and everything, a maximum payload, there we go, 33, 300, uh, 3,392 pounds, and the specs say 3,385 pounds, I think it is. So you can actually haul more than it says. That's weird. Very unusual. But everything about this truck, from those enormous mirrors 
to the enormous springs. We'll look at those closer because the suspension on this truck is really interesting for a variety of reasons. Uh, everything on this truck is built to tow more than anything else. It's also well fortified with the uh, Z71 package to go off-road, but more than anything else, this is a vehicle designed to tow. Now, more than one person has said to me, it'd be nicer if it was actually a little lower to the ground when it comes to towing. But no, you just use a drop hitch and you're fine. But one of the things uh, that I find fascinating about this is, and really how serious they are about doing the work, as you can see we have a beautifully uh, spray on bed liner situation, is right there, you are pre-set and ready to go for a fifth wheel trailer, right there. And uh, that makes it so much easier because everything's all, as far as tying into the frame and doing all the good things you need to do, it's, uh, it's all ready to go. And uh, we'll get into that tailgate more later because it's, uh, it's a, a wild creature. And naturally, uh, as is standard practice with these trucks that are well equipped for towing, we have cameras pretty much everywhere. You got cameras that can look down on your trailer hitch. You got cameras that can look at the bed of the trucks, make sure your cargo is not shifting dangerously. I mean, it's just really, this, more than anything else, I'm always complaining about so many of the trucks nowadays are not as practical as days of yore because they're much harder to deal with with all the electronics and they seem like they've forgotten a lot of the basics on making it easy to, to work with a trailer or just day-to-day -day work if you use it to haul stuff like you would think you probably would. So, this truck does not suffer from these problems. This truck is actually one of the nicer work trucks I've seen in a long, long time. The trim, rate, uh, uh, trim level, I should say, is the LT. So uh, that helps keep the cost down. And uh, as you will be able to see, the new interior is not exactly Spartan, but it is, uh, it's not over the top either. It's actually pretty practical and uh, pretty intelligently designed as far as what you need to do especially if you're going to jump in it for a long trip with a big trailer. So first of all, let's take a look at that engine if I can get up there high enough to actually take a picture of it. We'll see. Well, hello there. I am the GM Chevrolet 6.6 liter V8 engine. You know, I would have thought it would have had a deeper voice than that. But here she is, way down deep in this structure you see here is our V8 engine. Our massive V8, our V8 that has no turbocharging, no supercharging. It's just good, honest power. And look, you can see them little spark plug igniter things up there, those red things. There's four on that side, and there's four on this side over here. Well, this one doesn't have the uh, cool little things on it, though. Well, why not? It's not red. Huh. It does take 5W30 oil, and it does appear to have a completely composite uh, air intake system back there, which is not surprising. But we'll start over here. There we have our air box. Woo! It feeds directly into this thing. Uh, and I believe you have direct fuel injection, but I'm not entirely pos uh, positive about that. Maybe port. I'll uh, update that at a later time. Uh, but the most interesting thing about this nice little uh, longitudinal mounted V8 traditional power plant for a pickup truck in the United States is the invisible battery. There it is. Somewhere in that tray, you got your 12 volt. Uh, I don't know how they did that. You know, these engineers are talented. I know that, but my God, that's amazing. Actually, I think the uh, battery is over here. And what that space is back over there that I was just showing you is for an auxiliary battery for your camper, your trailer, whatever. Or you just want to run two batteries. You can do that. Uh, but that, that really cracks me up when I see that because it's a big space. Maybe you can put your tools there. I, I, I don't know. But uh, So I know you're dying to know some numbers. How about this? 401 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 464 pounds of feet in your torque department at 4,000 RPM. 
It's kind of a higher uh, low in, uh, torque peak than some vehicles out there, especially turbocharged V6s from some of the competition. But that's fine. I mean, it, this thing, from driving it myself, um, it spins up nicely, let's put it that way. <laughs> Uh, that's not an overly high torque peak and uh, there's a lot of torque on hand at low end so it, it it's very very definitely set up for heavy loads and big trailers so uh, it is really strange that they have the battery over there i was looking around for the battery and i thought well where did they put it but i believe that's it right there and you have a little spot there for uh sliding over to do a jump start if you need to yeah, that's definitely your 12 volt right there. But anyway, the, one of the biggest things about this particular powertrain that I'm impressed by having driven it is the uh, transmission, which is a 10 speed Allison automatic. And it is really, the shifting points are so smooth on it, which is so critical, especially if you're hauling a trailer that's got your livestock in it, your horses or your cows or your goats. or Boy, you can haul a lot of goats with this thing. You need a big trailer with a lot of goats in it. But it's really smooth, and uh, so those transitions are nice. You got all kinds of coolant oper apparatus, uh, massive radiator, and I assume there's probably a semi or completely massive <laughs> transmission cooler down there too, because that's very, very important, especially if you're pulling long, steady grades, and since the weather's hot all the time now. But uh, it's, it's fairly far set back, but as you can see, there is a lot of room around it for working on it, which is uh, great, although with any luck at all, you're not going to have to work on it very often. And what kind of oil filter do we have? Do we have a conventional oil filter? I can't tell from here. But you do have your serpentine belt. And uh, I would imagine this is going to be a pretty reliable overall. It should be, I'll put it this way, a reliable engine just because it's so much simpler than so much of the stuff out there. And uh, that's what you want, especially if you're living in a rural location and you use your truck every day. And it's an integral part of everything you need to do on your farm. And as you may see here, <laughs> in order to work on the thing, I, I, had to, I had to use my step ladder here. I mean, that's how high up this thing is. You could probably step on the bumper here. Uh, I would want it, if I was designing this thing, I'd put the bumper a little bit further out so you have a little bit more of a step platform. But that's me, and I'm sure from an aerodynamic standpoint, they didn't want to do that at all. But, uh, so there we are. Let's see if I can shut. In order to shut the hood, you gotta walk around over here, grab it from the side, and pull down. There we are. And there we are. As you can see, I don't believe that is a functional hood scoop, but it looks cool though, doesn't it? So some of you have been calling for it. You've been beckoning towards General Motors and saying, please do something really cool to the interior of our Silverados, would you please? Well, they've, they've done that pretty much, uh, especially now on the 2500 HD series. Uh, which evolves up to the 3500 if you're uh, really in the mood to haul stuff. Uh, but our, uh, <clears throat> our 2024 here has a beautiful new uh, instrument display. And it is, of course, seeing as how it is a flat screen situation, you have a lot of variations with it. You can, uh, you can change a lot of things should you so desire to customize it to your needs and desires. And uh, in order to navigate around this, by the way, here's our display layout. So you hit that, progressive. Let's go to uh, classic, first of all. And there we are. And it does look classic. You got your uh, mimicked analog instrumentation with your tack on the right and your speedo on the left. Uh, but then you can go to the progressive, which is the more modern take on what an instrument cluster should look like. And it's basically that, which is very similar, but it's, uh, it's not quite as analog looking, if you will. Then we can go down to digital, and there we are, just numbers. <laughs> you have your fuel economy on the left and your fuel economy on the right. Both, both of these sides, incidentally, both 
this side and this side over here. You can individually adjust to put what information in there you want. Uh, this is a really good one too because it also has, uh, just, look boy, look at our, our temperature is climbing as the engine warms up. Uh, you have your fuel gauge on the right, you have your uh, battery voltage and your oil pressure. So, and all this stuff, like I said, can be altered by the uh, owner or just somebody gets in your car and starts messing with stuff, which is a frightening thought. Uh, and, 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 and custom fit it to yourself. And here's clean. This truck is clean. And there we go. That's just a speedometer in the middle and uh, n not much else. It's pretty much what it is. So uh, what, what do we like most? Well, of course, I'm, I'm a classic fella, so we'll go back to the classic display. And like I said, uh, it's showing fuel economy on both sides, but you can change that. Uh, you can change these things depending on what you would like to see, which is a, a great feature. Uh, left side, and there it is right there, left side intro, info. Right now it has fuel economy. Let's put the transmission fluid temperature over there, see? Or none. That's what your, your tire pressure, time and temperature, compass, all these things are there for you. And then uh, you can go back here, go to the right side. See, you can adjust all that stuff to, to your liking. Oops, sorry, there we go. And what, what would we like to see on our right side? Well, you got your same thing, transmission fluid, temperature, tire pressure, all these different things are available to you. And, and if we go back, you can go to the lower gauges. And the maximum is what we have now, uh, medium and then minimum. So that's just the number of gauges that they'll line the bottom of your uh, instrument display to let you know what's going on with the vehicle, which is always good information to have, in my opinion. Uh, then you have information page offs, units, speed warnings, speed sign display, which will tell you what the uh, local uh, s traffic signs are telling you, which is becoming more and more common on vehicles, and it's a very useful thing to have. <laughs> if you're wondering, ah, what's the speed limit through this little town? You can just look, and it's probably being displayed somewhere in the car, which is nice, and all that stuff. So, how about that, huh? We like that. We also have your, uh, you can put your navigation there. You can put what's on your radio. You can put just general information, which is, this is one of my favorites because on this tank, we've driven 52 miles and gotten an average of 11 miles per gallon, which is pretty awful. But that's a lot of idling and doing things that are, are the worst possible situation in terms of getting good fuel mileage. I think it'll do considerably better if you're just on the highway. Even if you're towing a trailer, it'll probably do reasonably well. Not as good as a diesel, but still very, very well. So, what else do we have here? We migrate over, and here's our new uh, touchscreen display. And man, it's a beauty. Uh, it is a obviously a landscape format, and it is a very wide screen landscape format. And uh, you have to towing option right there that'll give you all kinds of towing information. And this uh, this is where you, where you can look, you can put cameras. You can do all kinds of things to tell you what in the heck is going on. Uh, and, and this interface, I believe, for cameras on the trailer, that would depend on if your trailer has a camera, obviously, but you have a way of interfacing with that. Uh, and one of my favorite features that's becoming commonplace also is uh, a system that tells you whether your lights are all working on your trailer, because that's something you have to check every time you hitch up, basically, for most trailers, just to make sure your brake lights, turn signals, everything else are working. So, nice, huh? Uh, our, our, tra our guest trailer is not connected at this time, but we have that option. And this here is, of course, your interface for uh, your phone or whatever you want, your device that you're using, as you're calling it, your phone. And your navigation, of course, is, is beautiful. And, and uh, what do we have in terms of our display here? I wonder if we have, huh? We go to well. This is just settings primarily for navigation. I think you can, uh, if you want to run with a dark mode on this uh, particular. I think you can do that. What's this? What's this? Ah, this is all your settings here. This is another, and uh, it does have Amazon Alexa. If you if you like to talk to things that that are uh, electronic in nature, uh, and you have your Google News. This as is becoming more and more common is more of the navigation systems are based on a Google system 
that also gives you access to Google in general. So that's a feature that a lot of people are going to like. Uh, depends on how your feeling is about Google. But, uh, and you have Google Assistant right there. So there is definitely a lot going on between General Motors and Google in a, in a partnership in order to provide all kinds of services for your vehicle. So we'll drop down here, and here we have, uh, if you can see this clearly, because the light's not that great. I'm sorry, I don't have a, a, a beautiful sunroof or moonroof up there or panoramic roof to, to enlighten all this stuff. But anyway, uh, this is our lane changing. Uh, it doesn't tell you, oh yeah, this, this is now telling me that it is activated. It's your, oh, lane departure warning here's your parking assist of course this will lower your tailgate if you don't want to get out if you're doing and getting in and out of this truck is a major major ordeal which it is for most humans because it is very high off the ground you can just probably uh, hit that it'll drop down and have whoever's out there load your, your, your load for you I mean you can do that hazard uh, turn off your traction control system and your hill descent control system for your off-road situations. We drop down and next to our uh, pretty standard climate array right there we have our trailer brake control which is very very easy to access. That's a good place for it actually. It's very easy to get to and it kind of falls naturally to hand uh, which is good. Speaking of which, before we go uh, further back I do want to, and by the way, uh, USB-A USB-C. Uh, I do want to show you one thing that's unusual. You got your column shifter. Oops, sorry about that. We got a wire in the way. I'm sorry. I put that away there. Uh, you got your column shifter right here, which is becoming a, a rare a rare bird. But there you go. And I love having a column shifter again because it completely frees this area up right here. And uh, your manual right here mode for if you go into a situation where you'd like to select the gears on your 10-speed Allison yourself. Isn't that what we have here? Isn't that 10-speed Allison? Let's have a look here. Let's have a look together. Oh, here and uh, Engine, transmission, Allison, 10-speed automatic. Yep, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Uh, but, but one thing that's interesting about having the column shifter here is they have put the windshield wiper, which is usually on a stalk on the right side these days. It's on the turn signal stalk. And it's actually, it works fine there. I mean, I... I complain about that sometimes because I've gotten so used to having it on the left side, but it works just fine. Uh, no big deal. Um, and then on the uh, steering wheel itself, of course, we got this is our cruise control area and this is our following distance and our heated steering wheel because you need to have the heated steering wheel on if you're uh, driving along in your cruise mode. And, and there's our adaptive cruise control button, resume, set, very, very straightforward. On the right side, this is what I was using to navigate around, as you saw earlier. And uh, you can also use that for navigating around your audio system. And we go way over here, and here's really interesting stuff. Here is your trailer assist, which will help you turn. Uh, oh, wow, and this is our, our drive modes. Wait a minute, I lied. This, this is a trailer. There we go. That's our trailer mode. And this is... We have our drive modes and include off-road, normal, off-road, normal. <laughs> those, are, those are your two drive modes right there. And of course, this does not, as I mentioned before, I think, or I mentioned at some point, this does not have a four-wheel drive automatic setting on it. It has a much more rugged uh, two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low very easily done uh, and very heavy duty because everything on this truck is heavy duty hence the name heavy duty so back to the center area there's no shifter here because as we said it's up on the column and if we open this massive massive thing here there is our uh, this is where we put our cell phone for charging well, I'll do that right now let's see if that works because it, it was working just fine the other day are we charging Dink. Give it a second. There we go. We're charging. We're 73% charged. Uh, then we have another collection of USB ports, including the USB-A and USB-C. We have a 12-volt power right there. And then you lift this up, and you got quite a bit of room inside here, which I think is excellent. Uh, these, these center consoles on these pickups so just get bigger and bigger and bigger. You can put whatever you want in there. 
uh, pretty much swallow anything that you have, especially laptops. You can put a laptop in there, I think. Can't you? Oh, yeah, if you take the tray out, yep, yeah, you can put a laptop in there, I think. <laughs> it is my belief. But anyway, our room is, uh, as you would expect from the massiveness of everything about this truck, the room is excellent. We do not have, you can see right here, it looks like the cutout where you would put your uh, moonroof. But there is no moonroof. But there is controls here that look like they would mimic. And what does this do? Why, wow, that's your rear window. Look at that. There you go. So you can open that without having to uh, yell at one of the kids to do it for you. Uh, and how big is our glove box, by the way? And there's only one glove box, as near as I can tell. This looks like it could be, but it's not. Uh, I would say it's average. It's not enormous. I do like an enormous glove box because you can put all kinds of mayhem in there. So anyway, room is absolutely terrific. You do have a lot of headroom. Uh, it's great. But you want to talk about room, one of the most important things about these crew cabs is how much room we have in the back seat. So let us, let us examine that because, ugh. Like I say, there ain't no running board, so it's a hike. <laughs> But look here, you got this assist. Yeah, there we are. All right. And as you would expect, what the hell is this spidery thing here? What is this doing here? Who, who left this in this car? Oh, that, that would be me. Uh, our windows are enormous and generous and go all the way down. And the uh, belt line is very low, so you got a real sense of space here. This is a real nice ride back here because... Uh, it's not stadium seating, it's standard seating. In other words, it's at the same height, but this window makes a big difference having all that space there because it does really make this feel nice and airy. And again, we have this indentation and I keep saying it looks like you could put a moonroof or something there, but I think what that's actually for is for your hat. It's for your 10 gallon. And you got your very nice uh, LED or whatever map lights right there. You have a completely flat floor, so there is tons of room here for your legs. And once again, our, fam our famous pairing of the USB-C and USB-A right there and some ventilations. No separate controls for the back, but again, in a lot of ways, this is an LT trim level, so uh, it's, it's more Spartan, and that's one of the reasons I love this truck is because it feels more like a truck that's ready to go to work. Uh, everything f seems really durable on it. The uh, armrest there is, is fairly high, but let's have let's have a look there. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good height. Good height for that armrest right there. And then we have these uh, these little weird things <laughs> that I've noticed on other GM trucks. Is that little? You have a storage space there, and it, and it goes it goes all the way through, I believe. So you can put your fishing pole or whatever there, but but there is more, there is a further option for your, uh, for your enjoyment here. Uh, and that's just lift, lifting the seat up here. There you go. And under the seat, you do have a fair amount. There's no like a storage bin or anything like that. And this is part of your, uh, uh, let us say, I have a tire flat situation uh, kit to help you to help you jack up the truck and change your spare, and it does, of course, have a full-size spare. Uh, but there we go. It's it's very straightforward. Eh, 60-40 in its uh, diversement, whatever that means. And uh, nice trim for uh, just an LT. You know, it's not a huge thing, but it looks classy. A lot of plastic, but it's good plastic. We've already seen our beautiful uh, bed liner spray in. It's beautiful, excellent. So there we go. How about this thing, huh? It's it's a truck's truck, I'm telling you. 16,000 pounds worth of towing, 3,300 pounds worth of cargo hauling capability, and very nice instrumentation. It's everything you need if you need yourself a big old crew cab pickup. Holy guacamole, it's raining and everything. Boy, I'm discovering things. Every time I turn around, I'm discovering something new about this vehicle. Like, why is my backup camera on when I'm going forward? There we go. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Let's go here. Um, 
something that's really interesting, I was, I was all, looking all excited because of the inclement weather to put on the uh, automatic mode in the four-wheel drive. This doesn't have it. This has four-wheel high, uh, excuse me, two high, four high, and four low, and that's it. Uh, it does have some very nice trailer controls right beneath the uh, switch that does your four-wheel drive. And as we go over this rugged terrain, I do have my independent front suspension, which I go into in depth later. But uh, this is a, <laughs> I haven't said it enough. This is a huge vehicle. This truck's bigger than several other trucks. This is like a pickup truck that ate some other. You know what, this thing, Everyone talks about the Raptor being big with all its stuff. Like the Raptor R I had, which had 37 inch tires, something like that. This thing could eat a Raptor, I think, just in terms of sheer size. There we go. I always love it when you hear, uh, I hear a lot of wind noise. Well, one of your windows is open, that happens. Whoa, look at this splash and splash. Uh, I love the fact that this is a truck's truck. This is actual, like an actual working truck. It doesn't have, it has a lot of the latest electronics on it, no questions. Got your fancy new, uh, what is this? I think it's uh, 13 inch, 13.9 inch, 12.9, whatever. <clears throat> the uh, new display is very nice, very widescreen Lawrence of Arabia sort of thing. Uh, it's wide, which is good, and uh, it's clear, easy to read. It's a good system. I like it. I also think, interesting thing about it, it's a nice size for a vehicle like this. It's perfect. It's big enough, and it doesn't come all the way up here in a more, something more approaching an overall square fo format, not a uh, portrait format but just a, a nice wide screen, which I, to me makes all kinds of sense. Uh, I understand people that like the portrait format in vehicles. That's fine. I, I really do. I, I've lived with it in so many other vehicles that it doesn't really bother me. But now, <clears throat> right now, with all this heavy dutiness we have, we have our off-road suspension, our Rancho shocks, our 3,300 pound payload capacity and everything else. This truck does not ride bad at all. It rides amazingly well for something that's empty right now because a lot of times uh, you'll get a real harsh bumping around with a vehicle like this and then uh, you put a bunch of weight in the back and it smooths out dramatically but this vehicle seems to ride really well empty which is surprising and welcome and I say good on you that's just good engineering especially when it comes to the rear suspension and all those leaves in those leaf springs. It's arched such and it's designed such with the backing plate when it does have a load on it that it just, it rides nice, perfectly acceptable. It moves around a little bit, but it's not near as busy as a lot of the suspensions I've encountered in the past. It does a, it does a nice job. Now there are things that I find vexing are a little annoying and the fact that on, the, on, on so many of their trucks, and I can't remember if the latest Silverado 1500 does this, but it still likes to put the windshield wiper on the turn signal stock where everybody else puts it on the stock over here. Now that's problematic when you have your gear shifter, which is right here, a column shifter, which I don't have a problem with at all. I actually like having a column shifter and you have a manual mode right here that you can actuate if necessary. But it's a rare bird, these column shifters, and uh, it's nice, and it's something else. If you have your dog with you, it's out of the way. It's completely out of the way. Four-wheel drive controls, <clears throat> transmission controls, all this stuff, everything is completely out of harm's way. This area here is completely open to whatever violence your dog may do, or your child, or your or your child's dog or whatever. I really, really like that about this vehicle. Oh, I didn't have the automatic on, there we go. The automatic climate control set at 70 degrees. Uh, it's also reasonably quiet. Uh, and again, it's real, 
it's it's a surprisingly different experience here. There's nothing wrong with the Duramax diesel uh, trucks. They're great, that, and that is a great, powerful engine. But this gas engine is nice. It's it's very smooth. It's just a big, simple V8. Does it drink gas? Oh yeah, it does. But it's not. I mean, you have to really seriously look at two things if you're considering the diesel engine over the gas engine. Uh, if you have a situation like I know a guy with a farm, he has all these enormous tractors that is it's a dairy farm, and they all run off of diesel, so he has a huge diesel tank on his property that the wholesaler comes and gives him diesel and puts it in his tank, this giant above ground tank. And so it made sense for him for his one single big work pickup to have a diesel engine because he's that's where his fuel is and he gets a he gets a price break on it because he buys it in bulk and that kind of thing. So that makes good sense for him. But for a lot of other people, uh, gas makes more sense just because the first of all, gasoline's cheaper, it's a dollar cheaper. The engine itself, this engine uh, the Duramax diesel puts a considerable premium on the price of the vehicle. Yeah, it'll last forever, but it also requires, you know, diesels require a lot of maintenance. Do they require more maintenance than gas engines? Yeah, actually they do. Uh, with different things on the, on the system you have to have looked after. And uh, plus you have turbocharging, and turbocharging in and, in and of itself adds complexity. You can't get a diesel on a vehicle, on a street legal vehicle, to my knowledge these days, that does not have a, a turbocharger on it, because that's just the way everybody's gone. And uh, if you live in a mountainous area, of course, that's great. Turbocharging is always good when the air is thinner, because it helps make up for that. But, and that's why turbocharging first appeared on uh, some of our World War II fighter planes as far as being mass produced into engines because that would help the performance of the, uh, the plane at higher altitudes, thinner air. So anyway, you got that, you got all that, all that complexity. And so it's, it's an interesting choice to make. I would look into, I don't know uh, how long officially this engine's been on the market, but I would look into it and, and talk to people and find out what the reliability is like because if the, if the reliability is good, you have a powerful incentive for buying the, uh, this engine instead of the diesel. Now, if you get up into the higher echelons of <clears throat> towing, like if you're towing 12, 14, 16,000 pounds up towards the maximum of this vehicle, a diesel probably, in most cases, will do a lot better job towing it will also use less, probably less fuel, fuel while towing. Uh, so, interesting choice you have there with your heavy duty truck. I do not recommend purchasing a vehicle like this if you do not need a heavy duty truck because there's, you make a lot of compromises. Uh, and this one is wonderfully, considering it's not like all the bells and whistles by any stretch, but it has all the important stuff on it. It's not a bad price at all, uh, like these towing mirrors. Now here's the difference between Ford and uh, everybody else with these mirrors, <clears throat> is if you'll notice in the F-Series pickups, they have a cut in the door down here, and they can actually mount the mirror lower. And why that's good is you can see over the top of the mirror and you can see traffic better. And that is not a small thing in my opinion. If you're a good, conscientious, careful driver, you'll be fine with these mirrors being up as high as they are and as much of the side view that they block when you're looking out the side, uh, you'll be okay. And these are marvelous mirrors. I mean, they're big. <coughs> they can do all kinds of magical things. <laughs> and they have that built-in wide angle. Oh, you got all your cameras. It's a towing dream. Well, allow me to demonstrate the uh, backing up cameras as we back this enormous truck up to this trailer here. Now, if you look, you can see my trailer boss looking straight down at it. Pretty amazing, huh? That is wonderfully clear. 
is telling you that there's caution, there's caution, there's caution. Are we low enough? Are we low enough? Well, I think we actually are. But as you can see, now what else can you do in, ter in terms of this? You can do this. Oops, sorry. There we go. And see, there we are. Look at, look at what a crap job I'm doing. All right, let's pull up. Let's pull up then. We're going to pull up now. It's telling you from above what you're doing. And now we'll go, we'll go back to reverse. All right. Back to reverse. Hey, there we go. Now, look at this. Look at the amazing magic of cameraness. See if I can pull this thing in right. And there's the, there it is. I'm going to come over here and just about. And there it's telling me the proximity. The proximity. Look at that. See how easy that is? Right there. Red, red, red. Now, how close are we? Shall we see? Let's see how close we actually are. Locked off. All right, let's have a look. See, look at there. It needs to go just a little bit higher, but that's all you need to know about this. It's very, very simple. And when you have these two cameras, we got cameras and cameras up here. That is, uh, of all the automatic trailering things, this is by far the most useful because all it does is give you the sight lines that you need to be a master trailer hooker upper person. I like that about this vehicle a lot. And that's all there is to it. Sonny Pruitt. Okay there, well let's take off with our trailer here. Let's see, I'm gonna stop just a minute, make sure everything's secure. Okay, that's good, that's good. And here we go. Nothing like pulling a nice big old two horse trailer with a beast like this. Now it's just, you know, the thing that's so amazing about a big truck like this is you can't even feel that trailer back there, boy. I mean, you got so much weight, 6,300 pounds of the truck weight itself, which weighs about the same amount as the trailer does. And I can't even tell that the trailer's back there. Oh dear. Oh dear, I've done this before. Uh, I don't know, rightly know where in the world my trailer is. I forgot to hook it up. Well, anyway, I'll go back over here uh, and find my trailer and, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get out of here. But a as you can see, the approach to the trailer for uh, putting your hitch on is greatly facilitated by the camera system on our Silverado 2500. It's large. It's heavy duty. It's 2500 Silverado. Boy, look at this thing. This is a, here's a, let's uh, have a little lesson in truck, truckness. And what makes a truck a truck and a, a truck, a heavier truck than the other truck. Uh, this rear axle, as you can see, is massive. And as is this differential, has a huge ring gear in there. Now, unless I'm wrong, and I'm not, this is a full floating axle. What does that mean? Well, it means the, the housing, that incredibly substantial structure you see before you is what bears the weight of everything on it. In other words, the springs and everything else, the axle shafts that spin off of here don't actually have any of the weight of the cargo or anything else on them. They are like floating free, uh, full floating. In a semi-floating axle, which you get on a lighter truck, uh, they actually have to bear some of the weight. Some of the weight actually comes through. The housing doesn't necessarily take the entire weight. Or that's how I remember it when I was 12. Um, <laughs> I imagine that's still the same. But you can always tell the difference just because of the, not only from the just size of the differential and the size of the rear axle, but you can just look at this rear axle and see how solid all this is. Uh, how about our springage? Well, here we have, I'm upside down. I'm right there. Well. We have here some incredibly large leaf springs, and that's all they are. They're steel, as near as I can tell, and there's a lot of them, and this is just a big, huge stack of leaf springs. Now, the beauty of this is, as heavy-duty as all this is, the ride is not overly punishing. Uh, it, you would think it could potentially be, because it's built to carry those 3,300 pounds, but no, it's... Uh, 
it's actually not too bad for a big truck. Not too bad at all. Matter of fact, I think we get a better view over here what I'm talking about near our uh, full size spare here. Uh, there you go. You can see you can see them springs in there now. Big beautiful leaf springs with a backing spring on the bottom. As the vehicle gets loaded, the top springs arch out and land on that bottom one there. And uh, that's how leaf springs work. They're really good. They're very progressive in terms of being able to adjust to the weight that they have to bear. And let's see, here's a shock absorber. What, what, what do we got on this thing? Is this a uh, Fox? Is this a Monroe? Oh, it's a Rancho. So with the Z71 package, you get those good Rancho shocks for your off-roadness. Uh, but again, not a harsh ride. Uh, it, does, it does quite well considering its uh, weight capacity and, and everything else. And the fact that it's built for some punishment because this is an off-road package, you see. Something else is massive is this exhaust pipe. I mean, my God, look at that thing. It looks like you could probably crawl, a, a real good size rat could crawl through there and crawl into your incredibly massive, uh, where is it? there it is, your incredibly massive muffler. And you're like, likely you also have a very substantially sized, it appears to be aluminum drive shaft. Uh, which everybody's gone to aluminum on their drive shafts pretty much, and I think that's uh, that's becoming the way of it because it's it's actually a very very good material to use for a drive shaft because it's light yet strong, uh, no corrosion. It just works well, it works very well. Uh, and we'll look around here, and we do have these massive rear. It says GM on it. These disc brakes, which uh, God, you know that's. In the, in the long-term development of pickups, that is a relatively late comer on, on trucks, uh, rear disc brakes. As, when you compare it to everything else, I mean, it's one of the things that took a long time to end up on the rear uh, uh, axle of a lot of trucks. Matter of fact, the Toyota Tacoma midsize truck just now started getting them, I think, with, <laughs> uh, is it this year or is it the 24 that's gonna have them? So anyway. That's an interesting thing as well. But there is your real heavy duty rear end. Now we gotta take a look at your front end because it is also extremely interesting and built for the long haul. Oh, while I'm under here, yeah, you do have uh, acres and acres of ground clearance. You can change your oil and everything without putting it on a lift. I mean, you got, you got all the space you need. You could put a, you could, you could park a Chevy Bolt underneath here almost and use this as like some kind of a shelter. Well, I'm exaggerating. Welcome to the front. What do we have here? This is rubber, but it does offer some protection, but this is a little, uh, a, a, a bad thing deflector if you're going off-road with this uh, 2500 Silverado. But if you look here, we have a very stout uh, upper and lower A-arm in that they're like this, this forged uh, steel here, or is it cast? <laughs> it's very substantial is what it is. And there's our little friend, the Rancho Shock Absorber as part of the Z71 package. And uh, very, very heavy duty and yet light components. But here's what's really interesting about the independent front suspension on this Silverado 2500. First of all, it's an independent front suspension. Now the competition, unless they've changed something, when you get to this weight class, both the Ram and the Fords have... Uh, straight front live axles with coil springs. That's it. It's a straight axle. It's not independent. But for years now on the heavy duty trucks, GM has gone with good old tried and true torsion bar front suspension. See this big bar going back there? You can see it gleaming. That is the, that literally twists in this housing right here. And that's what uh, determines your suspension moment as far as reducing it, instead of working like a coil spring, it, it actually, the torsion that is put on that is what per, uh, produces your springing effect, if you will. And uh, it rides really well. I mean, it works really well, but the, one of the greatest things about it is it does offer you and deliver to you an independent front suspension, which always rides better than a straight axle especially when you drive through bumpy corners and that's just good i mean i don't know why the other guys are still doing it the other way unless like i said unless they've changed something i don't know about 
Uh, but most of the really heavy duty trucks that get up into the size class and capacity class, that's what they do over there. They have straight axles. So, uh, and here is our front differential, which is got a steel cover and aluminum housing, which is lovely. And this, that's metal. These are metal uh, of your, your skidding plates here. So if you skid across that uh, Chevy Bolt that I was talking about earlier that you un inadvertently parked on top of because I asked you to give shelter to it, which was, that, I, that's on me. That's on, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but that's, that's what that is. It's nicely protected, nicely tucked in. And as you can see down there, if you look, we have a fully boxed frame all the way down the truck. And as far as I know, it wasn't that long ago that the uh, Chevrolet's GM, when every, every time I say Chevrolet, you know I'm also talking about GMC, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, they, uh, they did have some uh, frames that were open, but they were extremely stout open frames, and that's why... I mean, that, that has worked so well for heavy-duty trucks for so many years, uh, but you may not really know about it because everybody's made such a big deal out of a box frame. But there's so many different things that go into the construction of a frame, so what is better? Is it automatically better if it's boxed? Not automatically, no. Uh, but what they've done is they've gone so deep into the engineering of these frames that, believe me, you have everything you need. You have to have some flex in your frame, folks. A lot of fellers say, well, no, I don't want, I just want stiff, I, that's what your suspension is for. I don't want my frame to, no, you want your frame to turn, my friend, especially when it's under a hell of a load, because that's what, uh, that's the beauty of having a ladder style frame, is it keeps everything aligned properly as far as front and rear axles and everything else, and it can absolutely absorb some of the impact of some of your worst, you know, when you hit something really big, like a big dip when you've got a full load in the back it it takes the frame being able to flex actually takes some of the burden off the suspension the axles and everything else so and and in just in general handling and ride quality in particular you need to have some flex in your frame the the genius part is when they figure out exactly where the flame uh, the frame should flex and how much it should flex and that's what they work at that's what those engineers get paid all that money to do and so now we have this beautiful, uh, and everything under here, by the way, the finish, construction finish of this vehicle is very, very good. And it's not even one of the ins most insanely expensive ones. At about 65 grand, it's expensive, but uh, I think you will pretty much get what you pay for. You got all the goodies. You have everything but a diesel engine, but you do have a massive gas engine. So you got your torque numbers, you got your horsepower, and you got your independent front suspension. Well, here we go, folks. Your uh, 2024 Silverado 2500 Crew Cab LT four wheel drive has a standard vehicle base price of $54,000. And you add a lot of goodies onto this model, and you end up with a final MSRP of $64,445. This is a seriously good truck, folks. Uh, it's made for people that actually need to do truck things. You need to haul heavy stuff, you need to pull a big trailer. Uh, and it's got beautiful equipment for doing that and it also has a surprisingly decent ride It's very very nicely equipped and it's very comfortable So uh, I give top marks to this truck because it's one of the nicest to be honest with you I'm not I haven't been a huge fan of most of the new Generation pickups from pretty much everybody, but this is a very very good truck for the money even I mean I know trucks have gotten expensive, but this is actually reasonable so there you go. So take care out there, and we'll see you next time. Do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion.